to see you. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you right now, it's, uh, this uh, hitting and missing on services is, uh, is kind of rough. And we was in here Wednesday night after missing last Sunday, and it, it did. It seemed like it would have been a month since we'd been together. And I'm just glad we was able to get together this morning. Amen. 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 So it's good to see you. It's good to see some I haven't seen in a while. And I'm uh, glad that everybody's uh, is improving and doing better. Mark, it's good to have you and Miss Penny with us. And, and uh, man, it's it good to see Isaac over there. I'm going to tell you right now, Isaac had a, uh, had a definite uh, health scare uh, the other day. What day was that, brother? Thursday. Thursday. Wednesday. 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 Yeah. Uh, he... Uh, he, he about left us there, so uh, we're glad you uh, you are doing better, and we appreciate your uh, your brother and the uh, efforts that he put praise forward there, and so uh, praise God for that. But uh, it is it's good to see you, see you here this morning. We appreciate all of you being here, and uh, we get ready to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, just a couple things I want to just touch base on. Got a prayer list back there printed out for you. Make sure you get one of those so you can remember <laughs> folks in prayer. But if you will, remember uh, Jane Canham. She had a uh, heart surgery uh, this past week. And uh, Jane has a lot of problems with circulation and things like that. She's had several surgeries on her legs in the past because of circulation. And she had some blockage in some arteries and they were able to take care of that. But they didn't get it all done because uh, they were afraid to do too much. And so she's going to have some more surgery in the near future. So y'all remember Jane Canham, that's uh, Pastor Wayne can't have Potter Clay, Potter's Clay Baptist Church. That's his wife. So y'all remember them. Uh, remember the Hugart family? Is that the way you say it, Steve? Hugart? Uh, Hugart. Hugart. Yeah. Hugart family. That was the pastor there at uh, Lights for Christ uh, Church there in Archdale. He passed away. Went to be with the Lord. So y'all remember that family. Uh, let's see. Uh, I got a text this morning from uh, Jamie Akins and all of them have tested, or they all have symptoms. Only one of them has tested positive, but they all have symptoms. And so he asked that we remember them in prayer. Continue to remember Gary and Sandra Everhart. Gary is at home, uh, but Sandra is still in the hospital. She may be getting out. Uh, they're going to transfer to a uh, uh, physical rehabilitation place. And so uh, just remember them in prayer. And then, uh, as far as praise goes, uh, one of Heidi's students is being baptized uh, today. And so she's, uh, yeah. And uh, remember Jamie Stevenson, uh, Pastor Brian Workman's uh, father-in-law passed away, and so Jamie was uh, going down there to preach this morning, so y'all remember uh, Jamie. So I know we all have those that are heavy upon our hearts this morning. We got a lot to pray about, amen? Uh, we got a lot to praise the Lord for, too. Though. Yes, sir. Uh, J.R. Huger, where he pastored Cole Dillon's preaching there this morning. All right, remember, remember Cole? Cole's filling in there. Steve was supposed to be in South Carolina at the Sanctuary Baptist this morning, but they uh, evidently they got more bad weather than we did, and so uh, they didn't have service, and so uh, good to have uh, Brother Steve with us this morning. Bobby? It was Thursday, you was right. When I have him, we got more tests to run on him. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll leave it at that, all right? Hey, man, just leave it at that. But, uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, remember the Yarboroughs? They, they've got a lot of sickness there, Tammy and Ricky. Uh, uh, people aren't telling me that they've got COVID. I don't know if they're not getting tested or what, but they've got all the symptoms and they're feeling really bad. So uh, we just need to pray <coughs> one for another. Hey, man. Uh, we know one that can handle it, don't we? Hey. So, Praise the Lord for that. So I invite you to come this morning and ask God to prepare our hearts and take care of these burdens this morning. <clears throat> Opportunity that we have this morning to be able to come together and 
Lord, just thank you for uh, giving us traveling mercies this morning and letting folks get here safely, Father. And we just, we just pray for all those that might be traveling, whether it's uh, to church or, or going back home today or, or whenever. We just, uh, God, just ask for your protection, your care. But Lord, it's good to be in your house. And we thank you for each soul that's here. We, uh, we just ask, Lord, that you would meet with us this morning. That's what we need more than anything else is for you to meet with us, for you to speak to our hearts. And God, we need your touch upon our lives this morning. We need to, uh, we need to be made more like Christ. And so, Father, you, uh, you do your work in us today. And I just pray that the Holy Spirit would lead God and direct this service. And I pray that, Father, everything that is said and done, every decision that is made, uh, every song that is sung, every word that is spoken this morning, may it all be for the glory and the honor of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for our Savior this morning that loved us and died for us and rose again, that we might have the blessed hope of heaven and eternal life. And God, we just want to thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your word this morning, and it's, it's good. It's always good to be able to get together around the word of God. And so, Lord, you just... Uh, you just allow the Holy Spirit to open up our hearts, till up our hearts that we might be open and receptive to what you want to do, and that we might be surrendered to the authority of your word. God, we want to thank you and praise you for answering prayer. It's good to see some folks that we haven't seen in a while. We know that there's been a lot of sickness and still a lot of sickness, but God, we thank you for touching and healing, and uh, God, we just want to give you praise for that. Please be with those that have uh, been lifted up here this morning. Also, God, we want to ask that you be with all those on our prayer list. Help us to be faithful to pray one for another in these days, Lord. It's not just it's not just physical sickness, God. There's a lot of sin sickness today. There's a lot of folks that are lost and need Jesus. And so, Father, uh, we need to be we need to be in prayer more now than we ever have. And so, God, you help us to to be faithful in our prayer closets. Help us to be faithful to cast our cares upon you and and to lift up those needs. And God will thank you and praise you for all that you do. Thank you for being with Isaac. Thank you that he's here this morning. Thank you again for all those that have been away for a while, that have been sick. Uh, Lord, we just ask that you just continue to touch and heal. God, just have your way here in this service. Prepare our hearts for what you have for us. And we'll thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's get our hymn books this morning. Open to 575. 575 the stands we see. Right, Steve? Yep. Right? <laughs> yep. 
There you go. We'll have something to eat and, and we'll have some good fellowship and some good preaching. And so you guys don't want to miss out on that 7 o'clock Thursday. Uh, next Sunday morning at 1045, the children will be doing their uh, Christmas play uh, parts. And so uh, uh, y'all keep them in prayer and, and those that are helping out with that. And uh, the Christmas play has been uh, postponed indefinitely. And uh, so I don't know when we'll get to that. Uh, somebody has said something about doing a Christmas in July, but, but we'll see how that goes. And uh, ladies, your next meeting is going to be February the 10th. And since you didn't get to have one in January, and so there'll be more said about that as it gets closer. The Discover uh, Christianity Sunday School class, we're trying to get it started. And uh, hopefully, if uh, and Lord willing, we live uh, next Sunday morning, Brother Dwayne will be teaching that class. And so if you're a young Christian or if you'd just like to have some more basic uh, discipleship, uh, that's a great class for you to be in. That's next Sunday at, ni at 9.45. And then we have the uh, always on, uh, have the Discover Hope the Sunday School class. If you uh, want any more information about that, you see Brother Glenn down here. And then Sunday School Teachers and Assistants. So on February the 12th at 11 o'clock, you will be having a meeting at Sir Pizza in Randall. And if you got any questions about that, you can see uh, Donna about that. But that's going to be at Sir Pizza in Randall, February the 12th. Anything else need to be announced this morning? All right, well, let's worship the Lord with our gift. search and examine our Please. hearts, our yes. lives, and where we're at with yes. you. And I pray, God, you'd give us all a desire to draw closer to thee. I pray, Lord, for our preacher this morning, Lord. I pray, God, that you'd give him liberty and freedom to move in the Thank full you, I pray, God, you'd bind everything that would hinder. I pray, Lord, you'd search and examine hearts that if one be here lost, yes, I pray today would be the last day that they're lost. Amen. I pray, God, you'd save Amen. them. I pray, Lord, if there's one way where I ask you to bring them home, Father, yes. I to have your wonderful way in this service. We love you. We thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Christ and give their heart to Jesus and then they followed the Lord in baptism and they've been baptized and now they've gone through the Discover Hope class and they're in agreement with everything to, about Hope Baptist Church and why we do what we do and, and uh, it's, just, it's just personally and I, and I think you'll feel the same way it's just great to see God work in somebody's life like this and it's great to see Him work in a family but to see a, a, a young couple make the decision to follow Christ and then do those things that, that they're instructed to do in the Word of God and just see the growth. Wow. I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm looking forward to what the Lord's going to uh, do.
do in their lives and continue to use them. And so, uh, Derek, you got anything? I'll, let, I'll just open it up to you there. You got anything yeah. to share? Uh, I just want to give thanks to God first. Amen. 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 His grace, His mercy, that I was able to be saved Hallelujah. by Jesus. Amen. 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 Just being right here, it's not a coincidence. Amen. I believe that. Amen. A lot of paths I could have took and He led me on this one. So. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm ready to see where it's going to lead from here. Amen. Just give Amen. thanks to God. Thanks Amen. to Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You second that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that enough? Okay. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, folks, I, I appreciate y'all's testimony. I appreciate it. It's not just, man, you're just you're up here saying it with your lips, but we're seeing it in your life. Mm -hmm. So uh, we praise the Lord for that. But uh, to all the members of Hope Baptist Church that are uh, in agreement with uh, uh, Derek and Sherry Burroughs being uh, taken in as members of Hope Baptist Church, would you say amen? Amen. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I, I don't think that leaves any room for uh, uh, opposition there. So let's just pray together. Father, we are so thankful for your love and your mercy and your grace and God for changing lives. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful uh, that you uh, that you love us. So thankful, Lord, that you were willing to die on the cross for our sins that we might have eternal life. And I thank you, Father, for the work that you're doing in. Uh, the Burroughs family. I thank you right now, Father, especially for Derek and Sherry and the work that you're doing in their lives. God, just ask that you continue to work in them and, and grow them and use them for your glory. I pray, Father, for their children. I pray, God, you just have your hand upon them. Uh, let them be instruments in your hands. And I, I look forward to what you're going to do in their life, how you're going to use them through the ministry of Hope Baptist Church. And I just pray, God, you help us to always be a good church family to them, to encourage them, to pray for them. Lord, we're going to thank you for all that you do. We love you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Derek's brother Dustin and his wife Megan, uh, they, uh, they're not feeling well, or Megan and the children are not feeling well. Megan's so not. Okay, so keep them in prayer. And uh, as soon as they get back with us, they... Uh, they want to join as well, so we praise the Lord for that. All right, uh, Larry, you going to come minister in song this morning? Jesus for saving me this morning and I might be able to spend eternity with him. Yeah. Hey. Well, 
I have good news yes, sir. for you. Right. When heaven comes into view, one glimpse and you'll know the best is yet to come. takes over. Amen. Amen. But this morning I want to talk to you about the sequence of salvation. The sequence Amen. of salvation. Open your Bibles, if you will, to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. I told you a couple of weeks ago, I guess it was. I can't keep up with the days, much less the weeks now, what, what day it is, what week it was, or anything like that. But I, I told you that we were going to be focused on personal evangelism. I told you we were going to be focused on soul winning over the next several weeks and months maybe, even, even maybe till Jesus comes. We're going to be talking about bringing people to Christ. Amen? Amen. 
Aren't you excited about that? Yeah. We should be. That's the greatest work in the world. That's the greatest work in the universe is bringing men and women to Christ. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to be focusing on that and looking at that. And, and this, this message this morning is in, in that vein, is in that line. Romans chapter 10, if you're there, I'd like to ask all who can and will to stand this morning as we honor the reading of God's Word. Romans chapter 10, we're going to begin reading with verse 12. These are some pretty well-known verses of Scripture around here. Verse 12 says, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Father, we just want to thank you again for this time to be in your house. and. God, it's so good to be able to open up the Bible, the Word of God, and, and Lord, just, uh, just to get into the Word and let the Word get into us. We know that it is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword this morning. We know that these are the words of life. Father, we know that these words may convict. They may cut us, uh, uh, not necessarily physically, but spiritually. They'll cut us in our heart. But God, we know at the same time they can bring healing and they can bring strength. And so, Lord, we just pray that your word would go forth and accomplish what is pleasing to you this morning. I, God, I pray right along with Brother Steve this morning that if there's a lost man, woman, or child in this uh, sanctuary today under the sound of my voice, maybe watching by Facebook, later on by YouTube, Father, if they're not saved, I pray that the Holy Spirit would take your word and dig into their heart and they might see their lost condition and realize that who they need to know more than anybody else is Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. God, you save souls. I pray today, God, that you would convict the Christians that are here. Father, convict the church, dear Lord. God, that we might be about your business, that we might be about winning souls to Christ. God, you help us, and we'll thank you and praise you for all that you do. Lord, help me to bring out what you've put in me, and we'll give yes. you the praise yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The sequence of salvation. Uh, in these few verses this morning, uh, we see a sequence that brings about or leads to eternal life. Now, I told you a while ago we were all here by a sequence of events, and and even though they were not the, necessarily the same, maybe some of you didn't eat breakfast, maybe some of you did, maybe some of you didn't bathe, and we know who you are. <laughs> some of you did, hallelujah, amen. But we're, we're here by a sequence, but not necessarily the same sequence. But when it comes to the sequence that leads to eternal life, it is pretty much the same sequence for everybody. Now, there may be different people involved, there may be different places involved, but the sequence that leads to salvation and eternal life is pretty much the same for everybody. Amen. You look back there at verse 12. It says there in, in verse 12, it says, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. If a Jew is going to go to heaven, they're going to go the same way a Gentile goes. That's right. Amen. Amen. There's not one way to heaven for a Jew and one way to heaven for a Gentile. Amen. You say, but I, oh, the Jews go by keeping the law. No, no man goes by keeping the law. You know why? Because none of us can. No man can keep the law because if we're guilty in breaking one little part of the law, we're guilty of breaking the whole law. No man can keep the law. The Jew is going to go by the same way as the Gentile. It even said in the Old Testament that the just shall live by faith. It tells us in the Word of God that we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. And so when it comes to the sequence that leads to salvation, it's pretty much the same for everybody. Jew or Gentile, black or white, red or yellow, if a, if a, if a man or a woman is going to be in heaven, they're going to go all the same way. Amen. And that way is Jesus Christ. Amen. That is the only way that a person can go. Male, female, young, old, rich, poor, American, Chinese, all must receive the gift of eternal life through or by the grace of God through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. 
Yeah. Amen. You say, preacher, I know that. Well, good. I'm glad you do. I hope that that has been applied to your life and that you're saved. But there may be somebody sitting in here this morning that's lost and on their way to hell. And what they need is to know that the only way they're going to get there is the same way everybody else gets there, and that's through faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. It's not about being good. It's not about going to church. It's about being born again. Jesus looked at Nicodemus, a very religious man, and he told him, Nicodemus, you must be born again if you're going to go to heaven, if you're going to have eternal life. Amen? Right. So if you're sitting in here this morning, I'm glad you're here, but this coming to church is not going to get you into heaven. There's only one way, and it's the same way for everybody. Paul was a religious man. Peter was a fisherman. But they're both in heaven today the same way. That's right. Amen. Cornelius was a devout man. Zacchaeus was a rotten tax collector. But they're in heaven today and they got there the same way. Right. That old Philippian jailer, boy, you know he had to be rough and tough and mean and nasty. You, boy, you'd have, probably, you'd have probably turned all shades of red just to hear that man talk. He'd have probably embarrassed you with his language and his actions. He was, he was a rough and tough jailer. But you know what? Mary, she was humble and sweet. But if they're in heaven today, they got there the same way. Yeah. Woo! Hey, hey, hallelujah! Amen. Aren't you glad today that we can get to heaven the same way that Peter got there, the same way that Paul got there, the same way that Philippian jailer got there? Amen. There is a way! Yeah. His name is Jesus. Amen. And it's the same way for everyone. I can say that this morning because of what Jesus Christ said in John chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Right. Amen. It is amazing today that people really and honestly truly believe that they can get to heaven by being a good person. Or they can get to heaven by doing good works. Or they can get to heaven by giving money to some organization. Or helping feed the hungry. Or helping clothe the naked. Or something like that. Those are all good and well. But I'm going to tell you right now, none of them are ways to heaven. That's right. There's only one way and it's the same way for everybody. Jew, Gentile. Doesn't matter. Bond or free. Doesn't matter. It's the same way for everyone. The first step in this sequence that leads to eternal life, you'll see in Romans chapter 10 and verse 15. Romans chapter 10. We're going to have to kind of back our way through this sequence because the first step in this sequence is the last thing in our text this morning. It says in verse 15, And how shall they preach except they be sent? The first part of the sequence this morning is the call to preach. The call to preach. Now I want to tell you something. It scared me to death when God called me to preach. Penny was cleaning out her closet yesterday. Bless her heart. <laughs> Man, I, I had to go get some chicken feed. Went down to Ashburn. I come back. It looked like a bomb had gone off in the bedroom. I mean, there was stuff everywhere. It was hard to imagine that all of that was in a little bitty old closet. But she was digging around in there and she was finding things. And every now and then she'd bring me something. I wish I'd have brought it this morning and read it to you. She brought me a poem that I wrote her. <laughs> Whoa, back in the day, man. I, I, oh, I tell you what, she brought me a poem. She brought me this, she brought me that. But one of the most special things that she brought out of there, she had on a little bitty old piece of paper that looked like she had just tore out a little old notepad. And it was the day that I surrendered to preach. And a date on that. Let me tell you something right now. It scared me to death that God was calling me to preach. I mean, it scared me to death. I didn't want to tell nobody. I didn't want to look nobody in the face and say anything about it. I was scared to death. But I can tell you what, 30 some years down the road later, I am so glad God called me to preach. Hey. I wouldn't be where I am today if He hadn't called me to preach. Amen. 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 And I, I, there's not, I'm going to tell you right now, there is not a man that has ever felt the tug of God on his heart to preach the gospel. Oh, I'm, about everybody you ever talk to that feels that tug on their heart, they resist in some way. They're scared. They're, they know, oh God, you've made a mistake. I'm not the one. I must be getting my wires crossed or whatever. But I have yet to meet a man that surrendered to God's call to preach the gospel that was not excited about it and thankful for that call once they surrendered. I've not met a man that it didn't cost something to surrender to that call. But I have yet to meet a man that said it wasn't worth the cost. Amen? Right. 
I can tell you right now. But you know what? That's not what this scripture is about where it says there, how shall they preach except they be sent? It's not about a man being called to pastor, a man being called to evangelism, or a man being called to the mission field. This is about the call that every Christian has received. Right. And the call is the same for everyone that is born again by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That is the call to go and preach the gospel. Amen. Every one of us. Amen. If you're a Christian here today, there are no exceptions to that call. God calls us, commands us, every one of us, to go and preach the gospel. Matthew recorded Jesus' words this way. He said, you go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Mark recorded it in, a, in shorthand. He said, Jesus said, you go and preach the gospel to every creature. Luke wrote it down this way. Jesus told his disciples that after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power unto me to be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and, all, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Hey. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Jesus was telling his disciples then, and he's telling his disciples now that we are to go and preach the gospel. Yeah. Amen. That is the first step in the sequence, is that you and I surrender and obey the command to go and preach the gospel. There, there was a, a song a few years ago. Brother Larry, I think you like this song. I can't remember who sung it or anything, but it says, uh, the, in the chorus of it, it says something like this. I want to be your hands. I want to be your feet. I want to go where you send me. Let me tell you something. Church, Christians, we are His hands. We are His feet. We are His voice. Right. You understand today? What a great calling. What a great command that Jesus Christ, what a great commission He has given to every born again believer to go and be His hands and His feet and His voice to preach the gospel. That's right. Hey, if we don't go and preach the gospel, they're not going to hear it. The lost will not hear it. And so the first step in this sequence is that we must go and preach. Yeah. It is the call to preach. Amen. Look in chapter 10 and verse 15. It says, and how shall they preach except they be sinned? Well, there's the, the call to preach. But then there is the sending. There is the obeying to go. Mm -hmm. See, I'm preaching up here this morning. I'm looking at you and I'm, well, I'm just seeing all kind of heads nod. I'm saying, oh, we've been commissioned to go and preach. And everybody's nodding their heads. Some of you are saying amen. But then there is the sending. There is the obedience. There is the, 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 the surrender to go. Amen. Every one of us in here now, we know according to the Word of God that we've been called to go. We've been commissioned to go. Now are we going to go? There's got to be that obedience. There's got to be that surrender to go. Say amen. Amen. First step in this sequence is obeying this command to preach. To obey, to be sent. Go over to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. Amen when you're there. Amen. Matthew chapter 22. I want you to look at verse 14. Amen. You there? Amen. Verse 14 says, many, For many are called, but few are chosen. Now this is the last sentence in a parable that Jesus is telling, and it's a very important and a very powerful parable that He has given. And, and the interpretation of it mainly applies to the invitation to come to salvation. Jesus is telling people that they, they need to come. Amen? And, and what he, he wraps it up there, and He says, For many are called, but few are chosen. And that doesn't mean that Jesus is picking some out. What that means is that many are called, but few choose to accept. Few choose to accept the call. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But there's few that accept that invitation to salvation. And, right. and you know, the, the Bible tells us in the parable of the sower and the seed that out of, a, out of that 100%, there was four different seed, there were four different types of ground there, that out of all of that, only 25% produced fruit unto salvation. Yeah. Amen. Only 25%. So many are called, but few Except, But I want you to know that this, this scripture right here, this sentence right here by the Lord Jesus Christ could be applied to that call and that command and that commission that He gives to the church. 
You see, we're all commissioned. We're all called. But few accept. Few go. We, we've heard for years the stat that 95% of Christians never lead another person to Christ. You know, that, that is shocking. When you think about it, that 95%, and I really believe it's a pretty accurate statistic. I believe that on any given Sunday you could take a survey in the house of God and if Christians were honest, <laughs> isn't, that a, <laughs> isn't that a statement? If, <laughs> if Christians were honest and answered, we would see that probably that's a pretty accurate statistic, that 95%. I imagine there's some of you sitting in here right now, many of you, if that statistic is right, you're sitting in here right now and you're feeling convicted because you have never led another person to Christ. You have probably never even tried to share the gospel with someone else. You see, we've got to accept this call. We've got to be obedient to this call, this commission to go and preach. That's the first step in this sequence. We've got to go. Amen? Amen? The second step, Romans chapter 10, verse 14. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear without a preacher? The second thing, the, the second step in this sequence is we've got to go and preach the gospel. Amen. We've got to go preach the gospel. Hey. God's not sending us out to tell about Hope Baptist Church. Somewhere down the line, if the Lord tarries and we live, you, you're going you're to hear about how to present the gospel. And one of the first things that I always do if I'm talking with a person and, and we get into a conversation, and you, you got to start the conversation out. Most of the time, you can't just, just jump right into the, the spiritual part of the conversation. You, gotta, you, know, you have to talk about the weather, and you have to talk about the grandkids, and you know, talk about the price of gas if you're standing at the gas pump, something like that. But there's always a question that I ask, and that is, do you go to church anywhere? And I don't care what they answer because that's not important. Jesus doesn't send me out to talk about church. He does not send us out to talk about Hope Baptist. Oh, no, look, you, you, no, I don't go to church. Well, I, I'm sorry to hear that. I think church is important. But the most important thing is, if you died today, would you go to heaven? Amen. You've got to get, you, we've got to go out and preach the gospel. We're not going out to tell people about Hope Baptist Church. We're not going out to tell people how great Baptists are. That's a, that's a pet peeve of mine. I ask somebody, or you say, well, I'm a Baptist. <laughs> well, a bunch of Baptists in hell today. <clears throat> right along with the Methodists and the Lutherans and the Pentecostals and all the other. The name over the door of a church doesn't get you into heaven. That's right. He doesn't send us out to tell people about the Baptists. He doesn't send us out to talk about the weather. Man, what... I'm guilty, folks. I have stood and talked with somebody about a, a, a football team or a football game or a golf game. or I, You know, I've, I've stood and talked to them and talked to them and talked to them. And then we part ways and it's, they're not gone five seconds. And the Holy Spirit checks me and says, you're not out here to talk about that. You're out here. You've been sent to preach the gospel. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I know this is old hat for some of you, but man, we all need to be refreshed in this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Amen when you get there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're supposed to go out and preach the gospel. Isn't that right? The good news. Amen. The good news. Look here. Verse 1. Chapter 15. 1 Corinthians. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Well, I tell you what, we, once we read this, nobody is ever going to be able to say in here, I don't know what the gospel is. Right. Paul says, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you. Hear what Paul's doing with the gospel? He's preaching it. I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Listen, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. 
We're supposed to go and preach the gospel. The same gospel that Paul declared, me and you are supposed to go out and declare. Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world. Amen. Hey, lost man, Jesus died for you. Hallelujah. You say, well, why did he die for me? I didn't need him to die for me. Yes, you did because you're a sinner and the wages of sin is death. And he died for you in your place. Amen. Praise God. The good news is he rose again on the third day. Amen. He's got the power over death, hell, and the grave. And he's got the power to save you. Amen. That's what we're to go out and preach. That's good news. That's good news. But I tell you what, there's so many today that are preaching bad news. They're preaching something that is not a gospel. Gospel just simply means good news. Go over to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter, just keep turning right from where you was at. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. We're to go out and preach the good news. The gospel. You there? Yeah. Galatians chapter 1. Look at, verse, uh, look at verse 6. Paul says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. He said, Preacher, I, I thought there was only one way. There is. There is. Listen to what Paul says. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you which would pervert the gospel of Christ. There's a lot of perverted gospels today. Right. We cannot go out here and tell somebody that, hey, if you'll trust in Jesus Christ and start attending church, you'll be saved. That's a false gospel. That's not, that's not good news. That's not good news at all. What are you going to tell them that somebody is laid up in a hospital bed in their home? They can't get to church. What, 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 is that good news? You can't tell somebody that, hey, if, if you'll trust in Jesus Christ and be baptized, then you'll be saved. I don't care what the church of Christ preaches. Baptism has absolutely nothing to do with being saved. Oh, oh man, you'll be saved if, you, if you'll trust Jesus and just hold on to Him. Well, good luck, buddy, because you can't hold on to Him. That's right. That's not, a, that's not a gospel. That's not good news. That's perverted. You say, well, that's no big deal, preacher, if I, if I do that, if I go out and say that. Yeah, you want to know how big a deal it is? Look at verse 9. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. You know what Paul's saying right here? If you're going to go out and preach something other than the gospel of Jesus Christ, you can be damned. Paul says, in, in fact, if you're going to go out and preach something other than the gospel of Jesus Christ, you, you can be damned before you go out and preach a damnable gospel. <laughs> so what are you so fired up about preaching? Because it's the only way to be saved. Amen. I'm not, I didn't, I, I'm not saved because, God, because I called on the name of the Lord and started going to church. I'm saved because Jesus Christ died for my sins. And I said, oh, God, here I am. That's right. <laughs> some, of you, some of you may have believed in a false gospel. Some of you have gotten your gospel perverted over the years and think that, God, you're staying saved by your attendance in church. You're staying saved because you don't do the drugs anymore, you don't drink anymore, or you don't cuss anymore. None of that has anything to do with your salvation. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift from God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Right. We're bad about boasting. Oh, I've been a member for I don't know how long. I've, I've shared this, I'll, I'll, I'll try to go through it real quick for those of you who have already heard it before, but when I pastored at Tyro, me and Ty, uh, Tyler, our, my youngest, our youngest son, we were out on visitation one Saturday morning, knocked on a man's door right across from the Lutheran church. His wife came to the door, an elderly lady, and we told her we were from Tyro Baptist Church, we was just out visiting with people and talking about Jesus, she invited us in, we went in, we sat down, she called for her husband, he'd come in, sit down, typical old folks house, man, they had a the little sitting room, you know, and the, I mean, just, just typical, man, and we sat there, and we had such a great talk with that couple, and, and I said, well, do you go to church anywhere? And the man said, oh, yeah. He just, man, he just all of a sudden, man, just swelled up. He said, oh, yeah. He said, we go over there right across the street to the Lutheran church. 
He said, let me tell you something. He said, I've been a member of that Sunday school class over there for 45 years. I've not missed a Sunday in Sunday school since the Lord brought me back from the war. He said, I told God then if he would just get me back, I'd never miss another day in church. And he says, I have not missed a day. He even showed us his, what he called, perfect attendance pins. Had them in a shadow box. And I said, man, that is awesome. 45 years of not missing a Sunday. That is awesome. But let me ask you something. If you died today, would you go to heaven? And immediately the man's countenance changed and he got blood red in the face. He said, didn't you hear what I told you? I haven't missed a Sunday in 45 years. I've got all of these perfect attendants. I said, that's wonderful. That's great. But if you died, would you go to heaven? He got up, walked out of the room, told his wife to show us out. And you tell me what kind of gospel that man's got. It's not good news. If he didn't repent of his good works and, and all of that mess and turn his life over to Jesus Christ, that man's in hell today. That's why it's so important that we know what the gospel is and that we go out and we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news, the only good news that there is. Amen. So, uh, this, the first step is that we go and preach. The second thing is that we go and preach the good news, the gospel. Amen. And you, you know what? That's where people start getting scared, right there. Because you're going to be confronting people with the condition of their soul. Amen. You're going to be confronting people with the gospel that's going to prick their heart. And a lot of people are going to reject you. Some may cuss you. Some may slam the door in your face. But if they don't hear, they have absolutely no chance. Right. And Jesus Christ didn't say, you go and tell all the nice people. He said, you go and tell every creature Amen. the gospel. Hey. Amen. So we, we are to go and preach. We are to go and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me give you the, the next step in this sequence. Look in Romans chapter 10. Again, look at verse 14. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. Are you there? How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him in whom they have not heard? How shall they believe in Him in whom they have not heard? Who is the Him and the whom? Jesus! Hallelujah. And just go ahead and just, everybody just say it. Jesus! Jesus. <clears throat> Did he save you? Hey. Well, let's, let's say it like he saved us. It, it, there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. If, he, if you're saved, then you got saved by the name of Jesus. Well, that's better. <coughs> that was said with just a little bit of conviction right there. <coughs> We've got to go out and tell people about Jesus. What He's done. What He's doing. What He's going to do. <laughs> Amen? We've got to go out and tell them. That, that, I, I mentioned this Wednesday night. I told you that there was a survey. I watched this uh, YouTube video of a survey that was done. I, I told you it was at a university. It was actually, I went back and looked at it again because I, it was in this, uh, this message. And, and that's how it kind of got tangled up Wednesday night message. I, I'm, you know, you get too many messages in your head. And, but it was in New York City. On the streets of New York City is where the survey was done. And they just simply asked people, who is Jesus? Now, uh, some said that he may have been a person. He, he may have been a person. Some, this one lady said he was a marketing genius. <laughs> A lot of them said, I don't know. One said, oh, he was the David Copperfield of his day. He's nothing but a magician. <clears throat> One said, he is a symbol of forgiveness. One said, he was, a, he was an imparter of wisdom, a guru. New York City is a melting pot of humanity. 
There's good old boys up there. There's homosexuals up there. There's transgender up there. There's hard-working men and women up there. And this survey was spread out over all of that. And they had no clue who Jesus was or is. We've got to go out and preach the gospel. We've got to tell people about Jesus. How shall they believe in Him in whom they have not heard? What are you going to tell somebody about Jesus? What has He done for you? What is He doing for you? What's He going to do for you? Go out and tell them about Jesus Christ. Go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Everybody good? Everybody still awake? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Look at verse 7. Look at verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 23. Here's what Paul says, But we preach Christ crucified under the Jews a stumbling block and under the Greeks foolishness. You pay attention to that. Paul said we preach Christ and some stumble over that and some think it's foolishness, but Paul said we still preach Jesus. <laughs> There's a lot of people out here thinking he's a magician, that he's a guru. They're going to make fun of you. They're going to, they're going to mock you. But you know what we're supposed to do? We're supposed to preach Jesus. We don't change him to fit the culture. Right. We don't go out here telling him he was a good person, that he was a good teacher. Right. Go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Amen. Look at verse 5. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. We go out and we tell, Je we tell people about Jesus Christ, that He is Lord. You know what that means? That He is not just Savior, but He is Master. Amen. So you got, to, you got to tell people about Jesus. Romans chapter 10 don't go over there right yet. Well, you can. I don't care. <laughs> Romans chapter 10, Paul says that if you will believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, thou shalt be saved. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. There's way too much easy believism being preached today. Right. Right. All you got to do is believe. It don't matter what your Jesus is like. Just say you believe in Jesus. If you think He's a, you know, a, a, a guru, and I come to you and say, hey, you know what? All you got to do is believe in Jesus. You say, okay, I believe in Jesus. It don't ever get so far as they say, oh, I believe in Jesus. He's a guru. No, I believe in Jesus. Well, good. Hallelujah. Let's pray. You're saved. No, you're not. That's right. Hey. You got to go out and tell people about Jesus who is Lord. Amen. If He is not Lord at all, He's not Lord at all. That's right. If He's not Lord overall, He's not Lord at all. Let me get that right. You see people say, oh, okay, I, I believe in Jesus, and then they just go on and live the way they want to. No, all right, that's not it. You got to confess Jesus Christ is Lord. You got to say, hey, I believe Jesus Christ, Christ died for me. I believe God raised him again. And you know what? Because I believe that, I'm surrendering my life to him. He's Amen. going to call the shots in my life from now on. That's right. Amen. 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 So we got to go out and we've got to preach Jesus and we've got to be servant to everybody. That's what he's just saying right there. I don't care. I'm going to tell you something now. I have preached Jesus in some places. I've talked to some guys before. And I, man, I, I, I was just like one eye because I just knew I was going to get hit. I mean, I've seen them ball up their fists. And I've seen them get mad. I've, them, I've been called every name in the book because I said, hey, you know what? You've got to trust Jesus. Well, I believe in him. Well, then why are you living the way you're living? Right. End of friendship right there. But you know what? We're not out there to be their friend. We're out there to be their servant. Amen. And whatever it takes, God, let me share Jesus with them. Amen. Amen? Let me tell them about Jesus of the Bible. So the next thing that we see in our sequence is that, we, listen, we got we to answer the call. Everybody got to answer the call as a Christian. We got to go out and we got to preach the gospel and we got to tell them about Jesus, who He really is. Amen? Amen? 
Next thing, go back over to Romans 10, verse 14. It says, How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? How shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? The next part of the, the glorious sequence here is believing. The gospel is the power of God. Unto salvation. Amen. Amen. We go and preach the gospel. This is, this is really neat to think about. Romans chapter 12 verse 3 says that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Amen? Amen. Now listen, don't, don't, don't think that I am... I, oh, I lost my watch. <laughs> now there it is. Everybody just lost interest right there. I got this laying right there. <coughs> there there's... You probably hear this out of the Hollywood crowd, and you might hear it out of Joel Osteen or somebody like that. But we've all got a little good in us. <laughs> no. No, we don't. We don't have a little good in us. We're all sinners. We're all sinners. But we do have faith. That God has put within us. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's why people believe in things like gurus. That's why they believe in false gods. That's why they believe in Muhammad. That's why we're going to believe in something. Mm -hmm. But there's only one to believe in for salvation. Amen. Amen. It says, it says right there, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? A person has to believe in Jesus. They have to take the faith that God has put within them. It's not even really they take it. It's just that they hear the gospel, and the gospel is the dynamite, and the faith is the fire that lights the fuse. Amen. Romans 1.16 Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God. You've heard me tell you this so many times, you probably hear it in your sleep. That word power is the Greek word dynamis. It's dynamite. Amen. And what, what <clears throat> lights that dynamite is the faith that God has put within us. And when a person hears the God, hey, how are they going to hear the gospel if they don't hear, have, hear it from a preacher? Yeah. You got to go. You got to preach the gospel. You got to tell about Jesus and that faith that is in a lost man. God puts the two together. Hey, let me just show you. Go over to Galatians. Uh, no, no, no. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Woo Hebrews 4. Amen. I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4. You there? Amen. Hebrews chapter 4. You there? All right, verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. Man, wouldn't it be awful to come short of heaven? Yeah. Wait a minute. For unto us was the gospel preached, there it is again, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You see, we got to go. Jesus is telling us we got to go and preach the gospel. We've got to answer that call. We've got to go out and we've got to preach the gospel. We've got to tell them about Jesus because God has put faith in a man that, that he might believe the gospel and be saved. But if he does not put his faith in the gospel, then the Bible says it does not profit him. Right. Right. You say, well, then it's on them. No, it's on us. They've got to hear something to put their faith in. Right. And when they hear the gospel and they believe the gospel, then the Bible says they'll be saved. It will profit them eternally. So the salvation sequence begins with the call to preach. Answering the call, being sent. Everybody got that? Raise your hand. Man, y'all done pretty good there. Some of you, I know who didn't take a bath now. <laughs> they didn't raise their hand. <laughs> so it's the call to preach, answering the call. Be a sin. Then the second thing is the actual preaching of the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, if you know what the gospel is this morning, if you were just can think back just a few minutes, if you know what the gospel is this morning, raise your hand. 
Okay. Alright. Now look, whether you raise your hand or not, you're still accountable. So it's, it's the preaching, it's the actual preaching of the good news, then it's the hearing uh, of the truth about Jesus Christ. How many of you know who Jesus is? Amen. Hey. Is He Lord? Yes. Amen. Okay, amen. Then it's the believing that they put their faith in the gospel. And so then we got the calling, we got the preaching, we got the hearing, and we got the believing. There's one more thing it's the saving. Look back in Romans chapter 10, verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. So we go and we preach the gospel and we tell them about Jesus and they believe and they call upon His name and they're saved. You notice that it says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. It didn't say whosoever shall call upon the name of Jesus. It's saying that whosoever shall call upon the one that is the Master. That's right. Amen. Shall be saved. Born again. I got a whole list here. Redeemed. Heaven bound. Set free. <laughs> Joint heirs with Jesus. Amen. Name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Justified. Reconciled. Yes. Righteousness imparted. Mm -hmm. Are you saved? Amen. Do you realize that's what's happened in your life? Because of the faith that God put within you and somebody told you. Somebody had to tell you the gospel. Right. Whether it was grandma or grandpa or a preacher or an evangelist, Billy Graham, Billy Sun. Man, praise God. We went out to eat with Wayne uh, Wingfield uh, the other Sunday when they were here. And his daddy accepted Christ in a Billy Sunday crusade. Amen. Ah, he's my hero. Man, I love Billy Sunday. Look him up. Man, he jumped around, turned somersaults. When he went into a place, he, he didn't pitch a tent. He built a tabernacle. He built a tabernacle. A full-fledged building. And they built a stage that was reinforced because he was constantly jumping around and stomping and turning somersaults and everything else. Amen. I don't care. Somebody had to tell you about Jesus. Somebody had to tell you the gospel. And if you're saved, the faith that God put within you ignited that gospel power and you were born again. You were redeemed. You were sent for heaven. Amen. You were reconciled. You who were aliens and afar off were brought nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Boy, I tell you what, I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. And if anybody else is going to be saved, it's going to happen. Because of the sequence that we've looked at. Somebody's got to go. Somebody's got to say with the prophet Isaiah, Here am I, Lord, send me. I answer the call. I'm going, Lord. I know what to tell them. I've got good news. I get to tell them about your son. And I know, God, that you've put within them what will take them to the gospel and, and save their souls. I know that it's that. So I'm going now and I'm going to preach the gospel. That's right. And men and women are going to be saved. Amen. See, the final step in that sequence is they will call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. And guess what? That brings us full circle. We're right back to where we started. Now they go and preach the gospel. <laughs> Now they go. Gary Hedges is the man that shared the gospel with me. He was a preacher. Nazarene preacher. Come all the way back. And now I stand in the pulpit of a Baptist church. And I preach the gospel. Hey. And people like Derek and Sherry get saved. Yes, Not a thing I've done and just tell them what was told to me. But there's one that died in their place yeah. and rose again. And he'll save you if you'll believe in him. Amen. Amen. So there's two decisions that's got to be made here today. One for the Christian and one for the lost person. You know, God's the same overall. Jew, Gentile. You know what? There's only two types of people in here today. Sinners saved by grace 
and sinners lost in sin. So the decisions that have to be made this morning are for those who are saved and those who are lost. If you're here this morning and you're saved, you have a decision. Are you going to surrender to God's call to go and preach the gospel? Some of you haven't done that. Some of you have absolutely refused. Some of you have thrown up all kinds of foolish excuses of why you can't. But Jesus said, go ye. Didn't he? Amen. He said, yeah, but that was to the apostles. No, it was not. It was to the 120. Men and women. He said, you go and preach the gospel. So the first decision is for the Christian today. Are you going to surrender and say, Lord, here am I. Send me. I'm, I'm willing to go. I'll go. And the other decision is for those that are lost here this morning. And you have believed a perverted gospel. You think that being a good person, being a church attender, is going to get you brownie points with God. And when you stand at the pearly gates, He's going to say, well, you did more bad, more good than you did bad, so come on in. Friend, that's not the way it works. Right. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You're either going to lift up your eyes in the presence of Jesus or you're going to lift up your eyes in the torments of hell. And that decision is not made at the pearly gates. It's made now. Amen. So the decision for you is, are you going to call upon the name of the Lord? I've given you the gospel. I've given you the good news. I've told you about Jesus. I've given you the sequence this morning. So the salvation happens like that in an instant. Yeah. But there is a sequence. Amen. That leads up to that. And there's been a sequence in your life that has brought you to this point right now. What is your decision? Will you confess Him as Lord of your life? Or will you reject Him? Decisions to be made. Stand with me. Adore you, God. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed. In case you didn't hear me the first time. You're not, you're, not, you're not bowing your head before me. You're bowing your heart before God. The one who knows you inside and out. Friend, He knows today if you are playing games. He knows right now if you have absolutely no concern for your soul, and I believe there's some in here right now, some young ones in here right now, you don't have any concern for your soul because you're young and you'll take care of it later. Well, what happens if later don't come, friend? I wish every one of you young ones in here would live to be 100 years old, but I know that's not necessarily the case. Men and women go out into eternity every day in a moment. You've got a decision to make today. Are you going to turn your life over to Christ? Are you going to surrender your life to Him and let Him call the shots in your life? Or are you going to go on in your foolishness? Rejecting Him. For if you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, I hope and I pray that God's dealing with your heart right now. And you know you're lost and you understand that Jesus will save you if you'll call upon Him. And you're ready to make that decision this, thing, uh, this morning. I'm going to ask you right now, if that's you, would you slip your hand up? Preacher, that's me. I know I'm lost. And I understand completely what will happen if I die in this condition. And today, I'm ready to ask Jesus to forgive me. And I'm ready to confess Him as Lord of my life. Friend, if that's you, slip your hand up where I can see it. God's dealing with your heart. I need to see your hand. I can't see your heart. Right now, would you slip it up? Friend, it's not about you being good. It's not about you being in church. I'm telling you, don't <coughs> believe those perverted gospels. You're not saved because your mom and daddy are saved. You're not saved because your grandpa was a preacher. You must be born again. You must turn your life over to Christ. Exercise the faith that God has put within you and turn your life over to Jesus. If you're ready to do that right now, slip your hand up. Preacher, that's me. That's me. Anyone? 
How many Christians in here this morning would say, you know what, preacher, I've not been a very good witness for Christ. I, I, I've made all kinds of excuses. I, I, I've turned and went the other way. I, I've, been, I've been controlled by fear. But today, by the grace of God, I'm ready to say, here, Lord, here my Lord, send me. I'm ready today to answer that call to go and be a witness. If that's you, would you slip your hand up? God bless you. My friend, I'm going to tell you something. If you're here today and you're not saved, God's been mighty good to you. He's been mighty merciful to you to let you hear the gospel, <clears throat> to let you have an opportunity to surrender your life to Him. And whether you raise your hand or whether you come to this altar, that's not the important thing. The important thing is right now you make a decision. And you're either going to decide for Christ or you're going to decide against Him. But you don't have to be in church to be saved. You can get in that car out there in that parking lot. And you should say, God, I don't want to die and go to hell. I know I've sinned against you and I'm sorry. And I trust you today as my Savior. I trust Jesus Christ as my Lord. Forgive me. I live for you. I believe there are some Christians in here. You didn't raise your hand. Well, let me tell you something. God's, God's, not, God's not backing up on His call. His callings are without repentance. He's told every born-again believer that you need to go and preach the gospel. So whether you make that decision in here this morning or you make it later at your house, you need to make the decision to be a witness for Jesus. You can do it because the Holy Spirit dwells within you. He'll give you power. You let Him have His way. Father, as we come to the close of this service, I am so thankful that you know every heart here. And Father, if there's a lost person in this congregation this morning, I think the presentation of the gospel has been pretty clear. But God, you help them. You help them to see their lost condition. Allow your spirit to convict their heart and open their blinded eyes. And I pray, Father, that before it's eternally too late, they'll call upon the name of Jesus Christ. I pray they'll make that decision. They'll exercise that faith in Jesus. And I pray, Father, for the church today. That we'll go from this place with a new commitment, a new desire. First and foremost, to obey you. And secondly, to share the good news of Jesus Christ with a lost and dying world. You help us, Lord. We'll give you the praise. We love you. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. And hey, we do have service tonight at 6.